wins Falconer. You know when Falconer is? September 21st? Wait, no. <laughs> I always say September, February 21st. <laughs> Falconer is February 21st. Oh, I gotta botch that hard. Yep, I totally know what day it is. Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host Aaron, and for today's video we're headed to the world of Last Epoch. Mike, one of the senior developers of the Limit Hour Games, held his normal Friday Q&A live stream on Twitch, which means I get to bring you Dev Chat 116. As always, Mike answered lots of great questions from the community and gave us a couple of 1.0 teasers. And we're going to start off with skills again. Mike is going to give us an updated answer pretty much from last week. I'll explain in a second. Sentinel getting re, uh, reworked slash new skills before 1.0, the Paladin Heal skill, for example. Um, I, I can't really go into detail on what's going to be coming down the pipe for, um, uh, for Sentinel in general. Not a lot. Um, there's not a lot happening for Sentinel in 1.0. Every, every at launch, I'll, I'll, every skill at launch will have a skill tree. Um, and you know how we, how we get there. Ho hopefully means putting it, adding trees instead of removing skills. <laughs> um, Stand down or die. I'll pause it right there. It takes them a while to get there, but ultimately me and Mike had a little bit of a conversation. In last week's video, I said, healing hands, which is a paladin skill, is finally getting a tree. And Mike was very clear to say, technically he didn't say healing hands is getting a tree. He said every skill will have a skill tree, which means, and that's what he's getting at right now when he is chuckling a little bit, is hopefully that they are adding skill trees instead of removing skills. So technically, healing hands is not confirmed for a skill tree just quite yet. But I, my personal opinion, I think it'll get there. Now let's talk about the campaign. Uh, is the story going to be expanded in 1.0 or is it complete for now? Neither. It is not complete and will not be expanded in 1.0. Um, there are still three missing chapters that will get added uh, over the course of the few patches um, after 1.0. Um, we are, you know, like we're, we, we, we really want to have uh, that, that complete storyline finished up as soon as we can. Um, but we think it's more important to, you know, re really, where, where am I? Does it, does it want me to come down here and, and be like, oh no, I can't make it, where do I go? Yes, it does. There you go, down. Mike. <laughs> Probably didn't actually have to go down there. That's fine. We'll listen first. Um, yeah, like we we want to have a, a like a really nice complete storyline ready to go um, <sighs> as soon as we can. But having that play nice and feel fun and all sorts of stuff is more important. Um, and so we really want to take our time with the story and, and make sure it shines. Mike talks about corruption for a second. You know, it's little things like um, we're doing a like com uh, corruption compression. So like, um, th 300 corruption or 200 corruption will be similar to what 300 corruption is now. Um, and 500 corruption or 300 corruption will be similar to what 500 corruption is now. So it actually scales faster. Um, and there's, there's, there's some benchmarking numbers that you can look at there and they're not, um, it is smooth. Those numbers are just, uh, represented to, to give you an idea of like, uh, so you can so you can benchmark against what your expectations are a little bit easier. You're like, oh, if I could do this before, what's it going to be now? Um, so that it'll be it'll require less corruption grinding, which is important. <laughs> um, and then also the uh, the difficulty in general is just just shifting that onto corruption more instead of onto the mods. The mods will be static. I keep bringing it up. This is absolutely huge for endgame. Feels way better. Purely support class. Any plans for a support archetype, uh, like an aura bot from PoE, for example? Um, yeah. So there are lots of support options in the game already. We don't have any. We don't have any plans to. Um, I, I guess uh, have have a class that's shoehorned into support. 
specifically. Um, we like giving lots of support options for people that want to invest in that sort of thing. Um, Pally. But there's always damage options on the class as well. So I'll use Paladin as probably the best example of this right now. If we had um, Healing Hands. Healing Hands doesn't have a tree yet, but it will, we'll, we'll get there eventually. So this is just a straight healing ability. Um, there's Holy Aura. That is every aura from every game in one. <laughs> pretty, pretty well. <laughs> um... You know, it's got Smite, which half of what it does, like, it, it attacks things, but it also heals, and then you can use it to apply debuffs to things. Um, so there's there's support things you can do that are offensive as well, um, like just stunning things. So Shield Bash, you can use a shield on this Paladin to also stun things very reliably, which is a fantastic form of uh, support. And, uh, yeah, and, and, like, you can debuff people so you can, like, you can get frailty chance for Smite and... Um, so when it hits, it applies the frailty debuff to enemies, in which case they they deal less damage to your allies. So you're, um, you know, like there's more support aspects there. So there's there's lots of things that might not be directly, um, like this is a this is the support class, um, but you can you can definitely make support builds. Like uh, judgment when it dis when it, you drop it, it leaves consecrated ground that heals allies that stand in it, um, and and buffs and, and gives them um, spell damage as well. So there's like sigils will also heal allies there's you know there's 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 thing, there's lots of things you can do to make a support class and it's not just paladin like there's support class availability elsewhere as well um paladin's the most traditional one probably i feel like so far there is no content in le that would require a support class as far as all right let's go tackle as a team this very hard pinnacle boss and we Tell this one person they're going straight support. Maybe in the future, but not yet. Teaser number one, and Mike answers a question while it's up. Here's a cool thing to show you. Oh, look at that. Wow, so cool. <laughs> now I'm gonna guess this is an enemy, probably in Temple of Aterra, but chance, maybe like Sentinel, MTX set. I don't think it's probably an enemy. Get my face out of the way. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> when move is bound to a mouse button like MB4, for example, or any other key, you have to use the same key to interact with stash NPCs, etc. Uh, will left click ever be locked to interact even if we bind move to another key, uh, it's awkward to have to use MB4 to open stash etc. But I want to move with that key. Sorry, long question. I was unaware that's how this worked. Um, it's probably just a mistake. Uh, oh, it's specifically to interact with 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 world objects. Ah. Uh, I don't know if that's possible for us to do. Uh, with the way with the way that opening, I mean, like the, the, we, we, redesigning the system, it would be possible. But um, with the way the system's set up right now, the way you issue a command to like open your stash is by issuing a move command on it. Um, I don't know. Back to the good old hideout question. Uh, I asked this a long, long time ago, but now that lesser games like Street Fighter, Fortnite, and Final Fantasy soon have gotten them, <laughs> LE's secret lair when? Secret lair? Like, like, uh, like a hideout? Uh, like, a, like a place for you to go to where you can, like, customize the stuff and be like, oh, this is my, this is where I come to hang out. This is my bat cave. Um, it, it's... <sighs> We don't have any active plans to make that at the moment. There would have to be some, um, a lot of other things finished first before we did that. Uh, not limited to um, some server architecture changes. Um. No. All right, everyone. Unfortunately, we have come to the final teaser for Dev Chat 116. Mike, as always, thank you for continuing these Friday live streams. The community truly appreciates it. I appreciate it. It is such a differentiator from other studios. We love it. 
Now, what I'm going to do is let, allow Mike to play this teaser, and he's going to answer a question as it's on screen. Two asks at the end of the video. Ask number one, I'm hoping today is the day I have earned your subscription. I'm hoping today is the day you make the decision to push that little red button. I would really appreciate it, but of course, only if you think I've earned it. Ask number two, check out my Patreon. I get asked all the time, what's the best way to support? And Patreon is it. It's the first link in the description. You get the most bonus content and obviously it supports the channel. Don't forget, Warlock on Icy Veins is coming up, including the launch of the last Epoch Icy Veins section. That is coming in the near future. Okay, I'm done. Mike, take it away. Let me put this cool little guy up. Well, I think about that. What got so much negative feedback that we had to change it that we wouldn't have expected? The crafting system, the old crafting system. The like, and I completely understand why it got so much negative feedback now. Um, well, academically, I can understand it. Um, but when it, when it used to show a uh, percent chance for hard success failure, um, the, the old the old crafting system so like uh where's that new character for anyone that doesn't know so so we have this forging potential number up here now um and it it starts at a number and that's the max you have and it like ticks down as you as you forge on it as you craft on the item you're using up this resource that the item has to be crafted this potential um and when it hits zero it's the item's done in the past we actually had a number that started at zero and ticked up called instability um, and as you did more things to the item, the instability went up, and uh, at some point you would do a craft, and or as, as the instability went up, the chances of the craft uh, locking the item completely would go up. And um, so it's like, if it's it's in, it's incredibly similar to what we have now effectively, but um, it feels very different to use, and I never would have really thought um that, that was something i was surprised about how, how negative the feedback was um, and a lot a lot of that was based on like um like like misconceptions in how the system worked and um you know logical fallacies and things like that but it, it didn't really matter what the basis of it was the the feelings that actually that the players experienced was the most important thing Really, the why was kind of irrelevant. Um, the why was important to how we fixed it, um, but the why was irrelevant to uh, if it needed fixing or not.